those bricks we just created, we're going to take a step further in this tutorial. We're going to weather them. We're going to turn them into dirty and mossy, all the kinds of stuff that would happen to these things when exposed to the environment. We're going to use, again, one of the existing brushes that we're going to modify to do what we want it to do. And of course, we're going to put all that into a separate layer. So I'm going to go in there and get my paintbrush. And this time, we're going to use one of the spatter brushes that come with Photoshop. That's this group right here. It's the ones that come after the bristle brushes. And we use the largest one, 59 right there, which right now is going to do that. It just does a streak. So we're going to go in there and modify that brush. In our brushes panel, we're going to give it a lot of separation so that we see the distinct tips, just like that. And then we're going to go into our shape dynamics, where we have the size jitter set up, minimum. So we set it up, and we're going to set up the angle so that they are all going in different directions. And let's just turn that off. So it's just kind of messy like that. And we're also going to give a little color dynamics. Between foreground and background, we're going to bring down everything else to zero. We just want the foreground and background. So now that we have this information going on here, we got this gray. Let's make it a slightly lighter gray. And for the background, we'll make that a really dark gray like that. So there's the foreground and background established. So now that we have that, I'm going to go in here, and I want to attack certain bricks separately. I want them to not look like it's one continuous smear. So I'm going to go in there. I'm going to select just this one brick right here. So I'm going in there, and I'm selecting just that brick like that. And I'm in that layer which we'll call Grime. And uh, I'm going to take that brush, and we'll make it a little larger. And I'm going to bring down the opacity to about 30%. And I'm going to start to draw right into that area. And you can see that I'm drawing these kind of dirty areas. As I keep going over the same area, it'll start to get a little darker because of the fact that I have an opacity set. I can make it even bigger and just cover larger areas like so. There you go. I can now go in there and select this next brick right here. And I'll do the same to that one. So here I'll just concentrate more on this side wall, like that. And I'm just adding all this grime, soot, and dirt to it, like so. And I could do this to each individual brick until I have every one of them as dirty as I want it to be. Let's go to this one. And there yeah, we just kind of randomly throw some dirt in here. And it's going between the two colors. It's just very subtle because the opacity has been lowered like so. And we'll do this last one. Then we're going to do something totally different with the same brush. Going to come in right there, and we'll throw the dirt in here. There. That's good enough. Now, let's get a little closer, right here. I'm going to put the grime behind the separations, because the separation is being kind of covered up by that gray tone. So there, they came back out. So now, here's what's going to happen. I'm going to have that same brush but this time, I'm going to go in here and really damage the stone. I'm going to go in there and start gouging chunks out of it. So I'm going to layer on top of all of them right here. I'm going to take that brush. I'm going to bring the opacity back up to 100%. And I'm just going to draw a couple of tones right in here like so. All right, and I can make sure that I'm only going to get this section here. So let's just select this one brick because I want the whole side of it on this side here to be affected. I'm going to just kind of paint right in here like that. And a little tones in there. And then just a little hole right in there. So now this particular layer, these are going to be damages in that stone. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to double click on that layer to bring up the layer styles. And right off the bat, I'm going to take the fill opacity and reduce it to zero. Now the fill opacity made those gray tones disappear. But since the opacity is still set at 100, when I apply some layer styles to this layer, those new pixels that get generated for layer styles will remain 100% visible. But the original gray tones will have been taken away by the fill opacity. I'm going to give it a bevel and emboss. And right off the bat, you can see what's starting to happen there. I'm going to increase the depth so we get strong lights and darks. And there you can see that we have now these gouges in the stone. Now we can play around with the light source. Let's turn off the global. There, you can see where it looks like there are bumps in the stone based on the lighting, the direction of the light. We want the light to come from this way. Now they're going into the stone, as you see there. Click OK, and I could take this a step further by just taking a hard edge brush, like this one, make it really small, even smaller area, which we'll is throw a little crack in this brick right through here, and going down this way, 
And you can see that now we have damages in the stone. Now we can take this yet one step further. Let's get rid of the grime. Let's get rid of the damages. And the seps, let's change those a little bit. Let's select all and get rid of that. I'm gonna get a hard edge brush, like the one I have now, which does that. Okay, that's good. And I'm gonna go into my original paths and stroke them. That's good. Now I'm gonna take the background layer. Right here it is, the background layer, which I'm going to totally desaturate. Bring down its color. There we go, down to that. And we'll give it a little noise. Give it a lot of noise, monochromatic. And then we'll give it a little motion blur. Nice long distance at an angle, like so. All right, so that's kind of like a brush metal, right? All right, we might even want to make it a little lighter. So we'll go in there and just kind of lighten it up a little. What we're going to do to this now is add rust. Using that same brush that we used before. Here's the same big brush. There it is. All right. We're going to go into the brush engine, make those modifications again. We're going to increase the spacing so we see the individual tips. Go into shape dynamics where we have the size and the angle. And then we're going to go into color dynamics, which we didn't have before. I have foreground and background 100%. The rest are down to zero. So now with that, set up that way, I'm going to go in there, create a new layer, which I'm going to call Rust. And in this rusty layer, I have some colors to pick. So I'm going to get a nice orange color, say about like that. And for the background color, I'll get a really dark brown like that. And now I can start to draw some rust. And if I want to keep it inside those particular areas, again, I can go in there and segregate the area that I want to work in, like so. And this is the one I want to work in, just this one brick right there. So I'm going to go in there and start to draw some rust. And as you can see, I make my brush a little smaller, that I'm getting this nice little rusty kind of an edge to my little piece right there. And we'll draw some more little rust into these areas here and along this edge up on the top, like so. And some more. Now, this rust is eating into the metal. So I can go in there and just get a few more damages going through here. It's eating through the metal, which is causing an effect on the metal on top. So it's kind of flaking it away. So what I'm going to do is in that layer, I'm going to give it a bevel and emboss, just like before. Except this time I'm going to make the size really small, like about a one. Okay, and I'm going to increase the depth. So I get this really strong, nice little lights in there. Just so I'm going to get the little highlights and stuff so it looks like it's eaten into the metal. Bring that down. Click OK. And you see that now our rust has eaten into the metal, creating the effect that we want. But basically, what we did is we took existing brushes in Photoshop, modified them to solve the problems that we were faced with, which was rust and dirt and damages, all the kind of things that can happen to these materials when exposed to the elements. It's just a question of understanding what the brushes can do and then modifying them to make them do what you want.